Here's what's happening now. Mother Nature saving her worst for last. Will we set a record with the heat before the relief finally sets in? Plus thunderstorms just around the corner. Karen? Also first at four, we have new information about a deadly shooting in Mount Clemens. What police just revealed late this afternoon. We're tracking rescue efforts at a flooded cave in Thailand. Why volunteers are lining up to help and the big question those soccer players had for the Navy SEALs. Local 4 News begins right now with a breaking news alert. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Karen Drew. First at four, we have breaking news right from Washington, where the embattled director of the EPA has resigned. This is according to a tweet from President Trump. Just minutes ago, the president tweeted, quote, I have accepted the resignation of Scott Pruitt. Within the agency, Scott has done an outstanding job, and I will always be thankful to him for this. In spite of the president's assessment, Pruitt had been under fire for months and faces more than a dozen investigations. We're working this story and we'll have more at five. Closer to home, we are in the final hours of a heat advisory. Clouds are moving in. Get ready. The weather is finally about to change, Ben. Counting down the hours, Karen. In fact, by midnight, we're going to start noticing a difference. But until then, who 95 on the thermometer. It feels like over 100 heat index readings well into triple digits here on the east side, and we may not actually be done yet. Still a chance that we could be tying or breaking that record of 96. Not only is that the record for the day, but that's the hottest temperature that we've had uh, this year so far. Fort Live radar doesn't show a whole lot. We had a couple thunderstorms here on the east side. Those have since moved out. And so far, no severe weather, although we are technically under a marginal risk, at least for about the southern two thirds of the area for the rest of the evening. So we'll keep our eyes on that. Otherwise, temperatures will continue to fall slowly. We'll notice the big difference at midnight. That's when the cold front comes through. That's when everything changes. And I don't think you're going to believe some of these numbers that we have for you coming going into the weekend. We'll check those out in the seven day forecast coming up. Karen. All right. Thank you, Ben. Mount Clemens police are investigating a deadly shooting that killed a young man and also left a young woman injured. It happened in the area of Court and Clemens Street. Police responded to reports of shots fired and found a large group of people celebrating the 4th of July. Two people with gunshot wounds had already been taken to the hospital. The first victim was identified as 24-year-old Charlie McGowan. He died from his injuries. The 26-year-old woman is being treated for her injuries. Police are looking for three people of interest. We're working this story now. We'll have a live update tonight at 5. A fire that started Wednesday night at a grocery store in Melvindale continued burning through the morning as crews worked to prevent it from spreading. It happened at the Oakwood Food Center on Oakwood Boulevard between I-94 and the Schaefer Highway. Now you're seeing video from the scene. Unfortunately, officials are calling the building a total loss, and crews are already working on tearing it down. People in the community are devastated. They know me. They know me by name. And I'll walk in and I'll say hi, Trudy. I mean, it's just a family neighborhood store. One firefighter did have to go to the hospital after suffering heat exhaustion, but has returned home and is doing well. Construction for the Gordie Howe International Bridge is set to begin this month in Detroit. In an update given this morning by the Windsor Detroit Bridge Authority, a new rendering and projected timelines were given for completion of that bridge. Officials said the Cable State Bridge would be the longest in North America. The bridge will have a 125 year lifespan with bike lanes on the Detroit side. Work is already underway at the Canadian Port of Entries in both the U.S. and Canada. Well, the entire world is hoping for one more miracle as the soccer team remains trapped in that flooded cave in Thailand. Take a look. This is a new photo of the boys who have been inside that cave since June 23rd. Volunteers from around the world are pitching in to help get them out. Devin Skillion in the newsroom with the latest. Devin. Uh, well, Karen, uh, rescuers are really racing against time. They're worried that new rains could come and that would raise the water levels, making it harder for the boys and the coach uh, to escape. But right now, emergency crews are preparing uh, for all of the possible exit strategies that might exist. They're trying to teach the boys how to swim, believe it or not, and to use scuba gear. Some of the boys weaker than others. They may need to be the ones that are brought out first. Workers are also trying to drain more water out of the cave to make uh, any kind of evacuation plan easier. Many volunteers have traveled to the cave looking to help the uh, help. In fact, Australian police have come in, British cavers, uh, more than a thousand Thai Army and Navy personnel. Uh, for some volunteers, the team's plight gets close to home. Like any other parents where uh, I heard uh, the parents of the kids, the mothers crying on the TV and know that they 
lost their kids in the cave. Well, my heart broke apart and uh, I said I have to do something about it. Yeah. Right now, we are not hearing a, on a timetable on when a decision is going to be made. Uh, by the way, interesting thing, Navy SEALs who have been talking with the soccer players say the players inside the cave have had one big question for their rescuers so far. They wanted an update on what was happening with the World Cup. So a little levity in uh, what is otherwise a pretty desperate situation. Karen, back to you. Unimaginable they'd be asking that question, <laughs> yeah. really. All right. Yeah. Thank you, Devin. Mm -hmm. We're also tracking other stories from around the world. Making news first at four, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo headed to North Korea, scheduled to meet directly with Kim Jong-un. It is the first meeting since the Singapore summit where North Korea agreed to denuclearize. Now, since then, there have been reports that North Korea is not taking any steps to dismantle its nuclear program. The Singapore agreement set no timetable and no specifics. Secretary Pompeo is looking to discuss the next steps during this visit. A new poisoning mystery in England going on has residents on edge and they're being warned against picking up any discarded objects they might see. Two more people have been poisoned with the nerve agent that injured a former Russian spy and his daughter earlier this year. Right now, investigators say there's no evidence these new victims were specifically targeted. So that means a massive cleanup in southwestern England after the first poisoning may have failed. The latest victims, both in their 40s, are in critical condition this afternoon. Now, there are reports President Trump will make his pick for the Supreme Court by tomorrow and then keep it under wraps until Monday. The president has spent the last few days interviewing about seven candidates. Speculation is focusing on three people as the frontrunners. Brett Kavanaugh, Amy Coney Barrett, and Michigan's Raymond Kethledge. Right now, Kethledge is on the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Sixth Circuit. He graduated from the University of Michigan Law School, and he did clerk for the retiring Justice Anthony Kennedy, who the president is looking to replace. When the president makes his choice public, of course, you'll see it on Local 4 and click on Detroit.com. E. coli, salmonella, every new contamination scare puts us on edge about the fruits and the veggies we eat. Now, we know contamination can happen anywhere, but does buying local produce lower your health risk? We asked our Paula Tavin to get some answers to that question, and she is at the farmer's market in Detroit. What did you find out, Paula? Hi, Karen. Well, I found out that actually buying local helps a great deal. So I'm at a farmer's market in uh, North Rosemont, right? Yes. North Rosemont. Look at these beautiful cukes, zucchini, and squash. They have brought them from the fields right here to the communities. And just by buying local, yes, you reduce those emissions and that carbon footprint. It's healthier, but you also reduce your risk of foodborne illnesses. You're looking at acres and acres of farm fresh vegetables before they become produce. Duke Donaghy proudly says the fifth generation who will farm these lands is due any day now. In the meantime, four generations will sell you what they grow at the Northville and Ann Arbor Farmers Markets. Pick the evening before sold. They're all raised right here in Northville. At a farmer's market, the customer can talk directly to the farmer to find out what's on the food. Sometimes, and I have some questions that I ask, and they can answer my questions. Yeah. I'm trying to eye how many I need. Well, just keep filling the bag. You know what? When I'm buying locally at the farmer's market, I feel good about it. I feel like we're buying from neighbors. I feel like I can talk to them. I feel like I can um, trust not only the, the way that they're grown, um, the way that they're sold, that, that I'm getting something natural and healthy. Because Michigan has so much diversity in food crops, almost anything you want outside of tropicals and citrus can be grown and purchased in this state, which means during the summer months, we can actually make ourselves less susceptible to produce recalls just by buying local produce at farmer's markets or grocery stores that clearly mark produce as Michigan grown and or harvested. When's your corn coming in, bud? Next week. Buying local does not mean you can skip the all-important steps for careful washing. But consider shorter transit times, produce being passed through fewer stops and handled less. When you decrease the transit time, you're decreasing the amount of time that they're um, they, that these foods could be contaminated. And Michigan has a host of regulations many other states don't. For your uh, fungicide or weed control, uh, Michigan use this. Michigan can't use this, but Mexico can use it, Florida can use it, Arizona can use it, but Michigan's got a lot of restrictions that we can't use what they can use. Is that good or bad? Well, uh, if you want to eat more pesticide or whatever, yeah, buy from out of state. 
<laughs> With the Michigan Farmers Market Association map, we can also see the sheer abundance of farmers markets, and it makes it really easy to find them. Yeah, you know, I, I think I was really surprised at exactly how many there are. And we're actually going to put a link on our social media platforms to make it easy for you to find a farmer's market. Keep in mind, the fresher the food, the more nutritious, because it doesn't have time to degrade. Karen, buying local, great on so many levels. It really is. And I didn't know about the rules, the different regulations compared to Mexico and Michigan. So it's important to realize that and buy local. Yeah, I was surprised. All right. Thank you very much, Paula. We appreciate it.